Three groups traveling on three separate paths, three paths that now have become one. The Ottoman leg, Tattlebots, we'll know your secrets. The team that won, I forget what color they were, I think they might have been blue, is now going to break into two teams that are going to compete to see which team remains. And that team is going to go head to head in order to see who will become the Ottoman leg in Here I Stand. Not the Ottoman leg, but the Ottoman Empire in Here I Stand. Those two teams are each going to be joined by a third. Okay? They were robots disguised as humans, Frenchmen in the French leg of the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament. They caused the extinction of humans, and now the tables have been turned. They are humans disguised as robots, and each has but one goal, and that is to seek out the other team's robot that has their once robotic partner, now human nemesis, and they must destroy them. And if that person destroys the other person, then they are the sole surviving human, and they are the sole French power in Here I Stand. Finally, we are beginning our losers bracket. So, although this is the end of the semi-semi-finals of the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament, this is also the beginning of the kind of losers bracket or sub-semi-semi-finals of the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament. For, while the robot teams, two of them which are piloted by humans, go head to head, I'm drawing randomly from the loser's pile, which is right here. And these people aren't losers as people, they just lost a game or, you know, at some point in the tournament. The loser's pile, I'm gonna draw from those and they're going to try to survive the battle as they try to struggle across the terrain and get to the other side of the map. When one of them dies, they're out of the tournament forever and that's something I've never had to do. It's going to be really hard on me. Okay, I haven't really had to say goodbye yet to anyone, just uh, see you next time. But this is going to be a case where I might have to say goodbye to several cards. So, so as soon as someone might be gone, then we'll draw another one and just keep it going. And if the, the game, um, the game, the creep bot game behind me gets over and there are still people left to be drawn, we're just going to keep going and it's going to become just a game of outdoor survival without any killer robots. Alright, so I've laid it out verbally. Let's take a look at it visually with some verbal help. So we have two sides on Kriegbot here, right? Each side has two people. On this side it's going to be Jules and Shell from the Ottoman leg who played Tattlebots. We'll know your secrets. And one person from the French leg who was a survival, survivor from Battlestar Galactica. And that's Hubba, I believe is his name. Yes, Hubba. Um, one of these templates has Hubba piloting it. Okay, the other two are just robots and one of them is Jules and the other one's Shells. I'm not gonna let you know which one is which, which is why they're all clustered around the robo car there. Uh, because if you know that, then you can know which one is Hubba, and you don't want to know which one is Hubba. So this is actually a scenario you couldn't actually play in real life, because you would see people actually moving their robot across the map. I guess you could if everyone, if they just discussed their movements and then did it, but that's not really the way, um, it's not a, a fun way to play. Alright, so then we had the other side. We have Tinkerbell and Dancing Bear. They were also from Tattlebots, We'll Know Your Secrets. And then Brezza. Brezza is a human in one of these templates. All right. Then if we move towards the center here, these are, I have them positioned on sides, but they don't actually have any team affiliation. They're all just trying to survive. And they're trying to get from here clear to the other side of the map. And how I decided to do it, uh, if you're familiar with Outdoor Survival, is during this robot portion, Everyone comes in as a, a survivor, or they, they use the survival rules. Um, after the robots are all gone, it, they're gonna use the lost rules. And the lost rules are harder, I would say. They have less control over where they go. So right now they're survivors, um, and they, they, they're gonna stay survivors, as long as you enter in when the robots are still fighting. 
But then once the robots are all gone, um, they're going to be lost people and have to use a, a harder card. Um, if Brezza or Hubba get eliminated, the other one's just going to leave the game because they no longer have an incentive. They're just going to go right to the chart over there as the French, the, the French player. All right, I think that's pretty much it. Um, the, uh, the survivors are going to move first, and then we'll go through a round of, of Kriegbot, and then the survivors are going to move again. Oh, so the survivors can die either by starvation or, you know, going down the life index, or um, they can get squashed by a robot. And that would have to be a land-moving robot, or if there's like they're in the path of weapon fire, they might die too. Um, I haven't really figured out all the details on that. So let's get going. Oh, sorry. Quick reintroduction to the players here. It, this is fun for me to see these players who were in separate legs now on the same board. They're not going to really interact. Um, Outdoor Survival is not a very interactive game. Uh, well, it can be, but the scenario we're using is not. But it's so cool to see them. So we have Chinky, who was from Tattlebots. Cupid Doll, who I'm sure you all remember. She's hard to forget. Junior from the epic Ralty leg. And then she of the beautiful voice, Smiley. Um, all right here. And I guess we'll, we'll let Smiley go first because she's on top. And that's simpler for me. So this map is much larger than the standard Kriegbot map. So the turn consisted primarily of movement. In fact, it consisted solely of movement. So you can kind of see, well, maybe we'll do our survivors first. So Smiley, she's here now, um, heading towards the river. Um, Chinky, he was able to kind of control his movement more than everyone else. So he's heading right towards this, but he's probably gonna, he's gonna overshoot it, obviously because uh, they have to go their full movement rate. And then there we have Cupid Doll, and then finally Junior. He got a random movement that made him go up, but then he got to choose which side, which way he went after that, so he headed for the hills. And now he's on a, a path, so he can follow that path down this way and hit the river there in order to get some water and hopefully not be too thirsty. All right, so for our survivors, we've seen um, our first step losses due to uh, lack of water. Two people got water and they're okay, but they lost on their food index, but they still haven't hit the, the life level um, decrease. Handily, that's, that's the people on this side. So Junior and Smiley, they're okay. Um, both reached the river and drank, and so they feel good about that. Cupid doll, she reached some food. She's at this deer space right here. Um, but unfortunately, there's no water there, so she lost water. Uh, Chinky got the worst of it. He didn't get food, he didn't get water, and he got a bad event. Um, and it being a personal thing where he lost a water index, so maybe that's diarrhea, uh, which is too bad. I forgot to note an interesting thing about the map. So if you notice, our Krieg bots are kind of clustered at the top here. It had to do with how they set up. They kind of set up oppositionally. Um, if you notice also the river comes up and then goes down. So it seems like one could surmise that the heavy action between robots is going to happen here. Um, I'm, I don't think this is actually an outdoor survival rule, but I'm going by the rule that you can follow the river just like you could a trail. I don't see why you wouldn't be able to do that. And so it might be advantageous to a player to try and follow the river because then they're not going to lose water, which makes you lose life a lot faster than food. Um, so that, that makes for an interesting choice, I think. Uh, Smiley had to make a choice about that on her last turn. She could have gone towards the river this way and then try to follow it up, uh, but that would have taken her towards the where the fighting presumably would be. Um, at the same time, one could go up and then the river comes back down and take the river pretty much all the way out except for this marsh here. Um, or they could take it all the way down here and then go off that way. But she decided to go down to avoid the fighting, which could hurt her ability to survive. The turn saw mostly just more movement from our robots as they approach each other. They're kind of jockeying for a position, mainly our, our two fast flyers here, the rocket bot and the heli bot are going ahead and trying to get good ground for shooting at each other. We did see our first card reveal, and that's on the hoverbot here. 
Hoverbot uh, powered up on their turn, so they, they didn't move. They just powered up. Um, and they get to keep that status. And I think powering up actually makes that go down one. Yeah. They get to keep that status essentially for the rest of the game, as far as I understand it. I don't know why they'd lose their power-up status otherwise, except during the status phase. Unless there's something else that says you lose your power-up status. Maybe I need to check the rules before I use a powered-up weapon. But in the past, that's how I've played it. And I guess that's probably how I'll continue to play it. But maybe not. Maybe I'll have to check the rules. All right, went through another survivor round. First Junior is kind of cutting it close. He, he went right across the nose here of the rocket bot. Now, the rocket bot isn't going to squash him because it flies. So he's probably okay unless it goes into biped mode. Um, in a more dangerous position is Cupid doll here. She is right next to the path, or right in front of the path of both the hover bot and the tank bot. Either of them, if they move through her, she is going to be squashed. Um, Smiley, she went down here. Not much to say about that, except that she's taking this lower path, probably a safer path. Um, but then, most interesting, I think, was uh, Chinky. Chinky got to this food and water spot, and he plans to just camp out there and refill all of his health before he moves on. Uh, so he'll probably just be sitting there for a while. And there we go. Hoverbot's turn, and Cupid Doll just got smushed. Now, how I'm playing it for the robots is they don't... The players don't even notice where these survivors are. So if they get hit, it's not because anyone chose to hit them necessarily. They're just doing their own thing. They're kind of playing a separate game. It just so happens there's these ants walking around. And that's kind of what they are to them as ants. Because I'm, you know, in these guys' terms, each turn I think is a day. And so the robots are very slow moving and ponderous. And it takes them a long time to do anything. Um, but they're also so they're also super huge. So even though the hoverbot's considered to be in this hex, since the piece spills over into this hex, QP Doll gets rammed. So I think rather than have them just be smushed, I'm gonna roll it like this. We got a two. So do I count that as two numbers or two letters? I think two numbers would be more realistic realistic. <laughs> so she's at a five. So we'll take her down to F here. She'll, we'll, we'll be generous. We'll start her at the start of F. And she's kind of underneath the hover bot. So she can't move until the hover bot moves away, which will, won't be, so she'll be like, she'll lose a turn there too, where she'll get weaker. And that's really bad for her. We have a situation developing here. The heli Helibot got right behind the rocket bot. So unless the rocket bot has like a 360 gun, which I don't think it does, um, or some sort of special thing, uh, the Helibot's going to get a free shot without the rocket bot being able to shoot back. Um, Hoverbot's coming up, wasn't able to get far enough. The uh, rocket bot was hoping. It, it kind of sucks to have to say rocket bot instead of the, the person's name, but I, I, I'm going to do that in the interest of suspense. Um, Rockabot was hoping to kind of draw the Helibot in and then bring its forces in there to uh, shoot it down since the, um, the Helibot's friends are impeded. The Spiderbot's pretty slow and the Carbot has to drive around the woods <laughs> in order to get anywhere. Um, and so that's, that's a problem for it. So uh, another thing that happened was Cupid Doll got more fully run over because the Hoverbot the backside ran over QP doll. So we gotta go ahead and roll the damage for that right now. Zero, she managed to escape. Maybe there was some like, she was like in the mud or something, even though it was, yeah, no, I guess she was at the, no, she's on a mountain. Maybe she kind of rolled down a ravine after she got hit. Yeah, I think that's what happened. And Hellabot revealed a targeting laser. That's gonna bring us to our first attack of the game. Um, Rocketbot is, happens to be silvered, which is going to help. Uh, so the targeting laser is 3d6 against a silhouette of 8, 9, 10. So it's got to get a decent roll here. And that's 6. That's already enough, but we'll roll again for as we can. That's 16. 16. So that's, that's definitely going to paint the rocket bot. Now, luckily for the rocket bot, that painting is going to go away at the end because it's silvered. 
So, unfortunately for the rocket bot, Spiderbot's going to shoot next, and Spiderbot has guided missiles, and so that treats treats the rocket bot as as having a um, silhouette of three. One because it's painted and it's guided missiles, but it gets an. I'm going to say it gets a. Oh no, it's not a beam attack. No, it's it's a silhouette of one, and it's going to be a one d six. Unless Spiderbot has some sort of bonus card. I gotta check that. I don't think it has anything that adds to it, actually. So yeah, it's just gonna get a 1d6. What does this do? No, that's not gonna do anything. Alright. So it's gotta get a 1 or better. I got a 2, so that's gonna do 1 damage to the 2 slot. Right here. So that's unfortunate for the rocket bot, but it could have been much worse had um, had it not been silvered, because then those guided missiles just could have kept coming, kept coming, kept coming, and that would have been really hard on the rocket bot. Just finished the survival round. Not such a bad one, not as bad as we've seen. Cupid Doll's in a bad way though. She's at H stage now, which is rough on her. And she has to remain stationary here for a turn, which isn't the worst because it is a water space. And so the water penalties start to get pretty big here soon. Uh, so that's kind of a problem for her. Uh, great, great news for Junior. He made it to this little base here. So he can sit there kind of like Chinky is doing and just keep getting, well, he's going to be able to bring his water level back up one and his food level up three. So that's pretty good for Junior. And Smiley, she found some food. Big news, in order to gain another rotation, Brezza revealed who he was. He felt he had to get out of there. If he kept going the way he was going, the Hellebot could just keep chasing him, and he'd have to rely on his partners to shoot him down. And Brezza's frankly not that trusting in other people's abilities. Uh, so, nice thing is I got to, we're able to reveal who's who. So Tinkerbell is our Hoverbot. And our tank, our robo tank is Dancing Bear. So that's going to change things a lot. He's a marked target now by whoever Hubba is on the other side. 